This is a TV show called Flashpoint. If you're unfamiliar, it runs on the Victory Network, on Dish Network and DirecTV. It's owned and operated by televangelist Kenneth Copeland, and it is the embodiment of far-right extremism. This is part three. If you haven't seen the other parts, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll give context if it's missing. In the last part, these guys claimed their political enemies which is anybody to the left of hunting the homeless for sport, are Nazis. I'm only partially joking. In this one, multimillionaire Mike Lindell is going to talk about how persecuted he is. I'm not joking about that one. They have pastor and self-proclaimed prophet of God Hank Kuhneman on, too, to talk about the fact that the Bible specifically says they should respect the political authorities in their country and why those Bible verses can safely be ignored. Let's watch. Pastor Hank, I, I inevitably get thrown in my face by even some seasoned ministers, Romans 13. Yeah, I would say so. Romans 13, if you're unfamiliar, is the verse, is the chapter of the Bible that says, basically, you should respect the laws of the land until they conflict with the expectations laid out in the Bible. Um, you should, you know, pay Caesar's things to Caesar and God's things to God or whatever else, like, Follow the laws of the land and teach about Jesus and keep politics out of it. That's what that whole chapter is all about. And these people just pretend it's not there, make up excuses, find reasons to totally ignore it. It's insane, man. How we're supposed to pray for everybody. So can you clear that up? Well, I would. Yeah, well, Eric Metaxas already supposedly quote-unquote cleared this up a minute ago and explained why he believes that Romans 13 doesn't even belong in the Bible. It shouldn't even be there, apparently. Um, but let's hear Hank Kuhneman's explanation. First of all, I'll ask him how they would have prayed for Adolf Hitler when he rose to power because of... You don't have to pray for the people in power, but the whole idea behind Christianity is to remain separate from government, not get involved. It's to live your life separate from the world. You have to live in the world, but not be a part of it. You remember that verse? That's in there. The Bible is explicitly opposed to a Christian nationalist state in some parts, and these people just ignore those parts. Pretend they're not there. It's nuts. ...of the sleepy church. If you see an injustice taking place, I could see a justification for helping those people directly as a church leader. You know, you see the, the government mistreating some group of people? Go in and donate to their causes. Hell, if they need it, hide them in your church. That's what some churches did in World War II Germany. Uh, they hid people in the churches to protect them. But, no, th that's not good enough. What these people want to do is actually control the government. They don't want there to be a secular government in the United States. They want there to be a full-blown Christian government that is controlled by them. That's insane. Have you ever thought about that? And uh... oh, Let me step back, because I cut him off at the end of a sentence there. 35, roughly right here. Shut up. Well, I would... First of all, I'll ask him how they would have prayed for Adolf Hitler when he rose to power because of the sleepy church. I mean, the, the implication here is that Joe Biden is Hitler. That's what he's saying. Have you ever thought about that? And uh, so the reason we have scriptures like that is to literally protect us from leaders like Adolf Hitler. And those scriptures are put in, in the Bible so that we pray for people in authority so that we could live a quiet and peaceful life. Now, I want to say this, Pastor Jimmy, because here's where the misnomer is coming. And I get this a lot, you know, being a, a pastor here. Uh... OK, I get the impression he's using the word misnomer incorrectly, but I'll give him a chance to use it correctly. Let's hear it. Uh, in Omaha, Lord of Hosts Church. Uh, how, how many Lord of Hosts Church? congregation. <laughs> I love you, but, but here's the thing. Well, you shouldn't mix, uh, you know, the pulpit with, you know, politics. And, and I want to say this. My wife mentioned something to me today that was so powerful. 
Okay, is he going to get to the point of his use of the word misnomer? Funny enough, misnomer is, the, here's the definition of it, a wrong or inaccurate name or designation, or a wrong and inaccurate use of a name or term. So, <laughs> it's the richest irony for somebody to use the word misnomer incorrectly. I love it to death. And if you think about it, we were praying for years, church, for Roe versus Wade to be overturned, and yet when it did, pastors couldn't even mention it. They couldn't even celebrate it. They What's he talking about? Pastors can't celebrate? Well, yes, they, yes, they can. What is he even referring to here? Pastors have always been able to celebrate or talk about anything they want. Nobody ever said you couldn't. He's trying to make people think that he's persecuted. He's trying to make them feel like they're persecuted. If he can make them feel persecuted, it builds a sense of camaraderie and group loyalty and brotherhood. They didn't want to mix their pulpit with politics. We prayed for God to raise up a president who would love Israel and, and love Jerusalem. Biden has no problem with Israel or Jerusalem. He hasn't changed anything fundamentally with that whole thing. He's still supporting Israel just as much as any other president has. It's all about a persecution complex. And, and he, he, what he's trying to do is point out that Biden is reversing prophecy or what he believes to be prophecy. Absolutely insane, dude. Absolutely insane. And love the church and begin to call on God by using the name Jesus Christ. And God answered that when he gave us President Trump. And yet the evangelical church stood back and criticized the very answer to our prayers. And now... Donald Trump is the answer to our prayers. That is just deeply, deeply disturbing that he believes that, first of all. And uh, second, this guy actually believes that Trump is a new messiah. I've talked about this a few times. There are videos on my main channel about it. If you're not sure you fully believe me, just look at the videos on my channel about it. Uh, he, full-blown, no joke, believes that he's the new messiah, the son of man. They never called, this is what my wife said, they never called us Christian nationalists until President Trump stood up for the very things that we prayed for. No, people have been calling them Christian nationalists for a while. Um, and they were. Whether they were being called Christian nationalists or not, they were Christian nationalists all along. They've been talking about this stuff for, like, ever. What would they call David when he stood up against Goliath? He loved God and he loved his country. Would they call him a nationalist? And so I'm going to say this last thing. So remember, the whole this whole conversation started when Gene Bailey asked Hank Kuhneman to justify ignoring Romans 13. Remember? The, this whole thing was supposed to be about why we shouldn't even be paying attention to Romans 13, why that verse doesn't belong in the Bible in the first place. That is Hank's justification. His justification is... David would have been called a Christian nationalist. Uh, Biden is basically Hitler, so we have to. Insane, dude. Absolutely insane. How does one reverse prophecy? Isn't that completely contrary? Yes. Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. That's a good point. But they pretend that it's not completely contrary or completely contradictory or nonsensical. Insane. The children of Israel, here they were on the verge of their deliverance in Exodus 14. Pharaoh, a socialistic, communistic government was pursuing them. They were slaves. And you know what they said to Moses? If you really break it down, Pastor Gene, very quickly. They said, Moses, as they turned around and saw this government, Pharaoh and his army chasing them, they said, man, you, you brought us out here to kill us. We want to go back to that. You know something here, let me just lay this out for you. I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but do you know who was viewed as like the 
ultimate representation of evil before Hitler came along. I mean, you know, everyone says that this person is basically Hitler now. Uh, but before Hitler existed, before he came along and made a mess of everything, they referred to Pharaoh as the root of all evil. They'd say, wow, that guy's like Pharaoh, basically. Like Pharaoh from the Bible. No joke. Isn't that crazy? And this is the mindset of some Americans, pastors, people in the church. They would rather have socialism than freedom. That's why you have to... Nobody in a position of authority is in favor of socialism in America. Like, not one person. I don't know of a single socialist in government in America. These people live in a fantasy land. ...to speak up. But here's what they said. It would have been better for us to die in Egypt than for you to lead us out here. In other words, Moses, if you would have just shut your mouth and not got involved in politics, we wouldn't be here today. That's really what... No, guess what? Moses didn't get involved in politics. You know what Moses did? He went in and got the people out and left. That's not getting involved in politics. I mean, I, from my understanding, according to the story, I think Moses was like a high-ranking person within the political structure in the first place just because he's picked up by blah, blah, blah. Moses isn't even a real person. There's no historical evidence, no archaeological evidence to point to his existence in the first place. But even if he was... Oh, my God, what am I doing? But even if he was a real person... His whole bit was he went in to get these people out and then left. That is not the same as being a Christian nationalist and try, or even what a Jewish nationalist, I guess at the time, because Christianity didn't exist, and trying to take over the entire system of government and take out the people who didn't agree with him. That's totally different. But you know that nuance doesn't matter to Hank. What they were saying. And I want to encourage every pastor and those of you, if you're in here and you that are watching, there is an anointing of boldness that will rest upon you if you will speak up, stand up, and fight for God, for his church, and for this country. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, let's move along. Be seated. All right, so... So that was his justification for completely ignoring Romans 13, the verses that talk about how you shouldn't be involved in politics. I'm sorry, you didn't sell me on it. So, um, before I give this to Mike, I, I want to point out a few things that have been happening in the news, okay? Before he gives it to Mike? What is he giving to Mike? You know what he's giving to Mike? He's giving the mic to Mike. I'm sorry, I could not resist. You know, where most Americans outside of this room get their news is from Twitter. So let's see what Twitter had to say. I don't think that's true. They do get it from social media, but that includes like Facebook and stuff. Um, I don't know that even most Americans get it from social media, but a lot do. Maybe they do. I don't know. But, you know, this is this is their attempt to build... A narrative they're trying to build out in a propagandistic way a story that will scare their audience that's the goal here that's why they're framing it the way that they are right now uh, I know I know but just go with me for a minute all right so this is from Hardee's <clears throat> oh that's funny I love it uh, if you're if you're watching it five years in the future, Mike Lindell had his phone seized by the FBI at a Hardee's as he's trying to pick up, you know, a biscuit or something. I don't know. Uh, it, it was part of a criminal investigation. And so Hardee's tweets, now that you know we exist, you should really try our pillowy biscuits. I love that to death. That is very funny. Now that you know we exist, you really should try our pillowy biscuits. That's funny. I love that. All right. Here, let's, go, let's go to the next one. If you still have a phone, get a free breakfast biscuit in our app for my rewards members. 
Oh my God, I love Hardee's. This is so good. This is fantastic marketing that they're doing right now. Honestly, this isn't like they're not taking a side against anybody or anything. This is just fantastic for everybody. I love this. <laughs> Hardee's is loving this. They've never had so many people in their stores as ever. But wait, I'm not done. People have taken to social media to talk about it. Yeah, I don't think I've eaten at a Hardee's in like years and years, if ever. I don't know that I've ever eaten at a Hardee's. Come to think of it, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know that they even have a Hardee's in New York City. Let me just look out of curiosity. Let's see. That's not no new Hardy. Hard, no, there are no Hardys nearby. There isn't a single Hardy's in all of New York City, I don't think. Where is the closest Hardy's? Oh my God, dude. I think the closest Hardy's is in Pennsylvania. There isn't even one up north. That's nuts. Well, I guess it'll be a while still <laughs> before I eat Hardy's. Perfect marketing opportunity. It absolutely was. That's fantastic, right? I love that. In fact, watch this. That pillow dude, Mike Lindell, got the FBI and he took his phone, but I just wanted to say something real quick uh, to the FBI. You don't, you don't arrest nobody at Hardee's, man. Sure they do, first of all. Of course they do. And second, they didn't arrest Mike Lindell at Hardee's. What is he talking about? Let them finish that biscuit. Oh, yeah, C try Carl's Jr. That's a good point. Let me search for Carl's Jr. Hang on. And then we'll watch the rest of this. Uh, I'll step back a little bit. Carl's Jr. Uh, no, there is a Lawson Jr. Carl H. Law, attorney at law. Uh, no, Carl's Jr. There's Carl J. Russo Jr. DC, but no. No, Carl's Jr. Anywhere near me. Weird. Anyway. Okay, let's step back here. 40, let me go back to 40 minutes. Okay, try this. That pillow dude, Mike Lindell, got the FBI and he took his phone, but I just wanted to say something real quick uh, to the FBI. You don't, you don't arrest nobody at Hardee's, man. You let them finish that biscuit. Hardee's is too delicious to be. Could you imagine me in detained by authorities while your delicious Hardee's biscuit is just getting cold. You don't do that. Like, if it was a Popeye's biscuit, all right, fine. Take him into custody. He might choke the... Dude, I like this, actually. I Honestly, I'm kind of a fan. This is really funny. Dying, then you don't this is really funny. I, I like this a lot. Who is this? Is this like... Fine, take him... Is this an official representative of Hardee's? This is funny. In the custody, he might choke to death and die, and then you don't get no testimony. But this is Hardee's, dog. You just, it's certain biscuits in the game. You let a man finish his biscuit before you take him into custody. Hardee's, Bojangles, Red Lobster, Cheddar Bay Biscuit. Them the three main biscuits that if you, and I don't care what the crime is, you let a man finish his biscuit. Right? I, I like that. That's good. That's really funny. That's fantastic marketing for Hardee's. They did such a fantastic job with that. Oh my God. I wish I was that smart with marketing. I just want you to know the staff here at Flashpoint spared no expense. <clears throat> I want to know. No, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to give him the mic because he won't stop. Uh, <laughs> I just want you to know we shared no expense. We went to Hardee's today. And my Dude, the biscuit's cold. It's useless now. Didn't you hear what the guy was saying in the video? Mike, all of America wants to know, this is the burning question. What did you order? A chocolate shake and a mushroom Swiss burger. Well, there you go. <laughs> mushroom Swiss burger, interesting. Well, like I said, I, I haven't eaten at a Hardee's in like who knows how long, so I don't know. That could be disgusting. So here's your Hardee's. It's only a few hours old. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, Mike, I'm going to give you the floor for the next 15 yeah. minutes. 
And, and by the way, we also, you can use the promo code Hardee's. <laughs> Is that real? And uh, it's, that promo code works, and, uh, and also flat. Wow, I guess it is real. Your normal promo code, but um, you know, I, it seems like a lifetime ago when I uh, when I was at the Rose Garden right when the China virus started, and the oh my god, is he still calling it the China virus? Like, give me a break, man. President, our great president Donald Trump, brought me up there to talk about uh, what we were doing for the uh, China virus at my pillow, and. And I remember I was sitting in the Oval Office there, and I was, uh, it's quite a story, but I, I flipped over these notes that were supposed to be pre-approved, and I felt God had me write, you know, to write something. And go, I'm reading this notes that somebody had wrote for me, like, we are, we are a vertically integrated company. I'm going, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to bring a brag what my pillow is doing. I flipped the note over, and I, saw, and I wrote this stuff. And I'm writing a pen, and the, the president's behind me, and the vice president, and these other CEOs, and I'm writing, God gave us grace on, uh, and, you know, when the, I think it was November um, 8, 2016, whatever it was, when, I, when he got elected. And uh, a nation had turned its back on God. I said, we had took the God out of our schools, and I wrote all this stuff. And I we didn't take God out of our schools. You are perfectly free to bring a Bible to school, pray in school, whatever you want. No rules preventing you from doing any of that. It's just teachers are no longer allowed to lead students in prayer. They're not allowed to use the Bible as teaching material any longer. Distinct difference. And I'm, I'm scratching it out, and I'm doing lines up to the top and to the bottom and, and scratching this out, and, and I'm looking around now, and we're going to go out to the Rose Garden and, and uh, maybe be called up on stage, and... I just get down to the bottom and I put, um, you know, I end it and I'm looking for a piece of paper and the president goes, come on, Mike, a hundred million people are gonna see this. I'm going, ah! you know, I can't even read my writing, right? Well, I flipped it over and I remember those words as I'm saying this and I'm going, and it just, it was able to read it even though they were all over the place. And God gave me the words that day and, but I remember, you know, distinctly saying we need to spend time in our Bibles and in the Word, and that God had given us grace, right? And I remember the president, if you look at that tape, everybody, on the look on his face, because his <laughs> words had to be pre-approved, and he's going, he's got this look like, what is he saying, and, or how is Mike reading those words, right? With all this. <laughs> and uh, I remember. So is he saying he went off script, I guess? I remember getting done, and I expected an applause. Then I remembered that it was all the media, the horrible media sitting out there, right? And uh, Jim McCoskey, all of them sitting there spread out, right? Well, I leave there that night, and I was the last one to leave the White House in this rent-a-car, and, uh, and I got my phone back, and I remember turning it on, and I had 875 text messages, right? I didn't know that many people had my phone number. Now I found out the FBI had plenty of people on there. Well, <laughs> any I don't think I get the joke. Is he saying that the FBI used his cell phone? I don't understand. Anyway, the, um, <clears throat> and it became the number one story in the world, and it, was, it started this attack, this attack from the media just going after me because I talked about God from the, from the Rose Garden and getting in the Word. But then the good media, the, the media, it was like this, this spiritual battle out there worldwide. It was the number one story in the world for seven days. I did 132 interviews. It was uh, from morning till night, right? Okay, I'm very doubtful, but all right. Well, at that time, that was the beginning of the China virus, and and, uh, uh, he's obsessed with being a scumbag, isn't he? It's like his life's mission. Uh, a guy had brought me this therapeutic that worked for the virus, so I put millions of dollars in there. I was going to give it away free to save the country. I'm going, this is a miracle, God. I'm thinking God had given us this grace. Well, as you all know, there was an attack there, and it was shut out, and that money was, you know, that wasn't meant to be. And I'm, and I'm praying. I'm going, God, what, you know, what happened here? And then... Uh, well, then along comes, um, of course, the election. And, and I'm thinking, how is this grace, okay? Well, I'll tell you how the, it's grace. 
Had, had, the, had this not overtook the algorithms, the 2020 election will go down in history as one of the most important things in, in world history. Because what happened was, I'll give you just a, one of the miracles. Do you remember uh, uh, the two senators in, in Georgia that won, that they cheated the two Democrats? Oh, my God. He's talking about uh, what's it? What, oh, my God. What are their names? All of a sudden, it, it, I'm drawing a blank. Raphael Warnock and who was the other one? <clears throat> Ossoff. John Ossoff, I think. Those two, there was a runoff election and they both won. I would say primarily because Donald Trump screamed about election fraud and everything else and that led to suppressed voter turnout because people didn't want to, they didn't see the point in voting and all that stuff. Well, he's claiming that it was all a plot, that it was all part of the plan. The Democrats? Well, up until that point, you know... Wait, are you saying the Democrats cheated? No, no, I'm saying uh, there's... It was... <laughs> I'm saying there's a lot more to it than that. <laughs> but here... Yo, give me a break. But here, um, here, I was in Georgia on, November, on uh, January 4th, and I was there with our, our real president, Donald Trump, and, and he... Um, <laughs> but... And remember, remember the runoff, or the the uh, runoff was uh, the next day, January fifth. And I sat there and I felt God just say, you know, I go, wait a minute, I need to pray that they take them both. Remain, remember, evil's downfall. Their evil is greedy. Okay, evil is greedy. And I said, I said, please. I got on my knees and I prayed. I said, please, God, let them steal them both. And you all say, oh, Mike, you did it. Now, hold on, okay? <laughs> the, um, it, it, I'm a marketer, and I'm telling you what I would have done at that point, because they were caught in the, on election night, because by God's grace, they overran those algorithms of those machines and shut everything down at 3 in the morning. Those are so he's claiming that the the like voting machines were overrun or the algorithm was overrun with votes for Trump like none of this is accurate from a computer science perspective none of it makes any sense whatsoever but he's been making this claim for a while now called deviations had that not happened we would have all went to bed at 3 a.m. the every state would have been done counting Biden would have won we would have all woke up the next day and said wow this country really turned liberal I mean it turned up progressive they took God no, the country didn't turn progressive. It's not progressive at all. The country is just not a huge fan of Trump. That's all. I mean, that's that's the whole thing. If they had decided to remove Trump from the, the ballot, i.e. get him out of politics completely and have him stop even endorsing people, then they would have won. Uh, I'm sure a lot. And if he hadn't claimed that there was fraud and all that stuff i'm 100 percent sure they would have won a lot more seats than they did and where our kids in college this uh you know what is get where's our country going you know and we would have we but we would have looked around and said you know who voted for him you know and we would have been confused but we would have lived in that with that false belief okay well on that day I, i'm a marketer and if i'd have been their marketer on January 4th, or I, or I would have said, you guys, tomorrow, give them back a Republican so they shut up about this fraud. As if Republicans didn't win in the House and the Senate. If the Democrats were really cheating and they really wanted to, like, take control of everything or whatever, if it really worked the way Mike Lindell believes in his delusional fantasy land, they could have just taken every single election everywhere. There was no fraud. This people live. I'm sorry. These people live in a fantasy land. We already have it. We have, we have three crooked sa senators anyway. We don't need it. And then they'll shut up about it. Had they done that, everyone, most, maybe not you guys, but most people would have said, "Just Mike, or whatever. You guys, just forget about that. If they're, you know what? We still have the Senate. We'll get them back in 2022." They already do, largely. That's pretty much been the, the position of the, the vast majority of people. Just a small subset of the population 
well, small is relative, I guess. 30 to 40% of people are absolutely obsessed with this whole thing. Blue, red, blue, red, blue. Yeah. And we would have lost our country forever. But they were greedy and took them both. You all, were, you all know where you were that day going, oh, now what are we going to do? It became very real to a lot of people that were in denial. And, but they had a backup plan. Evil had a backup plan for that in case people rose up and said, hey, wait, there was crime. Let's look into this. They had January 6th plan, okay? And when I say... Oh, wow. So he's saying Democrats planned January 6th? Is that what he's telling us right now? Evil, I just said evil. You know, Michael Lindell is the one that flew a lot of the people out on January 6th. He, in his private plane, brought out, like, Ken Peters and Tina Peters. A lot of Peters. Weird. Uh, a whole bunch of people. Bizarre. I mean, he knows full well that these people were not Democrats. That it wasn't Antifa rioting or whatever. He knows it was Trump supporters. Because he flew them out himself. He's simply making this up. I think Lindell for the most part, lives in a, a fantasy land and honestly believes a lot of the stuff that he says. But this specific thing, I can't buy. People had it planned, whatever that is. Now, what they did, when it's one of the most significant dates in history will be January 7th going into January 8th. You say, why is that? That day was so critical because 1.2 million Americans, churches, people, pla um, uh, news platforms, people's podcasts were deplatformed that day. Not just our great president Donald Trump on on Twitter. Zuckerbuck's Facebook shut people down. Zuckerbuck's? He calls Zuckerberg Zuckerbuck's. Why? Why does he do that? YouTube, Vimeo, you name it. Across the board, they canceled our voice that day. And I'll tell you what: the ones that weren't canceled. Where the rest were in fear because it was set up that way. I compare it to when I was growing up as a kid. We had black and white TVs and we turned them off and it went down to a little tiny dot. And we would, as kids, we'd turn it back on right before the dot went out and it would come back to life. Okay. Well, that day the dot almost went out on humanity. Okay. That's right. Had that went. Wow, that's a little hyperbolic, seems to me. And out, it would have been end times. That's it. I figured we... Wait, it would have been end times? Well, why didn't they let it happen then? I thought that's what they were shooting for, right? Win either way, because they're all the believers. We go to heaven, you know. And uh, But the dot didn't go out that day, okay? The next day, or the next one that was very significant was February 4th. Uh, February 4th of 2020 of 2021 and you say well why is that well as you know the, the uh, when I uh, when I got so this is about two weeks after the, uh, Joe Biden's inauguration the evidence I got for this election it always bothered me during the November and December I'm going all these non-residents have voted in every state I said, it was thousands in every state. I go, wait a minute, people are genuinely good people. I can't imagine 5,000 people marching across, you know, Nebraska into Iowa to vote and commit felonies. I said this. There you go, exactly. This guy lives in a fantasy land where everything is a, a big fraudulent secret. It's insane. This has to be done by something else, machines or computers. So on January 9th of 2021, I was given this evidence. By the way, it's up there now, DennisMontgomery.com. You can check it out. And it's, in a, and it's sitting in a court in, in uh, Nevada to get this lifted so you can finally all see. It's got a government gag or to see all the, all the what happened in this election and then this lawfare, everything goes bye-bye, okay? Well, anyway, I'm given this evidence and... As you all know the story, I'm going to skip up to that day on February 4th. If you remember, right before that, I, there were things happening to me. I was, uh, I was the last person to go on Fox that week. I had went on Tucker that week. I was the last person to go on Newsmax. Remember when the Newsmax reporter tore his thing off and walked off the stage when I said the word Dominion? 
No. Yep. You all remember that? Well, I was making, I made the movie. I said, God, what are we going to do? I, the impeachment trials were coming up the following week. And I, I thought it'd be like the OJ trials. You can come in there with the evidence and just put it out, and we would all go, there it is, everybody. But then I heard that they weren't going to show anything in there. And that's the, at the one point, that's the one time I go, you know what? They're going to peach him. And I said, they're going to come and they're going to kill me. That's oh, my God. The persecution complex is real with these people. He believed that he was going to be killed. You must be joking. Sadly, he's not. He's not joking. He really does believe this. He believed that they were coming after him to kill him. No joke. He lives in a delusional reality, and it is so sad. That's what the one time I had where my blood just went, whoo, and I said, Lord, help, you know, help me. What should I do? And that's when he said, make a movie. And we made the movie Absolute Proof in five days. It was a miracle. And when we, and when we did this... When we, did, when we did this, they, that was coming out February 5th. Think of the timing of this. On February 4th, Smartmatic sued Fox News, okay? That was so significant because that changed our world forever up until actually two days ago. What happened that day is, for that's called lawfare. It hadn't happened in our country since 1798, according to Alan Dershowitz. And when that happened, the media, nobody could go on Fox, Newsmax, and other medias, or any media, and talk about machines. Yeah, you know why? Or for that matter, election crime. You know why? Because this has been proven in a court of law without a shadow of a doubt that Smartmatic and Dominion and all of these others did not take part in any kind of election, blah, 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 whatever. They did not weight votes in anybody's favor or whatever other thing. They, it was completely made up. Completely made up. Intentionally. By Sidney Powell. And in my opinion, Mike Lindell picked up on what Sidney Powell was saying about it. So, feel free to say what you want about Dominion and Smartmatic. Be my guest. Go nuts. But you will face legal consequences for that decision. Fox and Newsmax and One American News, I think, were all sued. Uh, maybe not One American News. I don't remember. Anyways, Fox and Newsmax, at the very least, were sued by Dominion for lying about their company and destroying their reputation. Rightfully so, for a billion dollars. And Mike Lindell was personally sued by these people. By Eric Coomer, I think. Rightfully so. And he's the victim. After destroying a company, he's the victim. Why does God need Mike Pillow to make a movie? Why Can't God just snap his fingers and beam the evidence into our brains? Well, see, that would be too obvious. And people would... Oh, God. Oh, God, the drillers are back. That'd be too obvious, and people would know for a fact that God is real then, and God doesn't want anyone to know that he's real for a fact. It's ridiculous. It was over. It was silence. What I've been fighting for for a year and a half was to get our voice back because you had to have Fox. You had to silence them. You had to silence these nudes, please, we trust for our voice. If we don't have a voice, you can have all the evidence in the world. You can have everything. That's why this stuff is so important we're doing right here. He doesn't have any evidence. That's the thing. He wants to make it out as though he has all the evidence. He doesn't. He has no evidence that this is real, that this election conspiracy stuff is factual. No evidence of it. None. But he needs to be persecuted. He needs to pretend there's a conspiracy out there when there simply isn't. We, our voice has to, you have to have our voice. So, so when, when the media attacked me every day, 
It was a blessing. It was a blessing like you wouldn't believe when they're going, not Mike Lindell, my pillow, lost three more retailers, Bed Bath & Beyond. What did I say to the media? Because they went in for the attack. And they're going, I said, did you hear about China attacking us? Did you hear about Dominion? And did you hear about this? I'd get attacked again. Did you hear about this? Did you hear about China? I never let up. God had me saying, doing one thing, and that's it, okay? Well, we did a, we did a thing a few weeks ago, uh, about a month ago, called the Moment of Truth Summit, okay? And by the way, that's when, when I, back then, that's why I created frankspeech.com and Lindell TV. I knew that the, the way that they would silence me, because after February 5th, when February 5th came, no media talked to me. It was complete silence, everybody. Complete silence. They all went fox on me, okay? Well, and, not everybody. Right, not every, no, yeah, that's right. But, <laughs> but I want to tell you, with that, when they all went silent, that's the way you can kill anybody's voice. You don't even attack them, okay? So when we did the... Well, the thing is, it's like Walmart. A lot of people congregate at Walmart, right? You don't have a right to walk into a Walmart and start screaming election conspiracy theories. Walmart has a right to kick you out. By its nature, a company is, a, is a, like a gathering place for people. But you don't have a right to take advantage of the fact that people gather there. You can stand on a street corner, public land, where people walk past and scream nonsense to your heart's content. But a private company has the right to remove you from its property. You don't have a right to take advantage of their platform, which is what Mike Lindell wants. He wants the right to take advantage of Twitter's platform or, I don't know, what, what Fox News' platform or whatever other thing. He, wants, he believes that it's his inherent right to be on Fox News and talk about this stuff. It's simply not. So listen to this again with that in mind and, and think about how this guy is pretending to be a victim when he isn't. Went fox on me, okay? Well, and, not everybody. Right, not every, no, yeah, that's right. But, <laughs> but I want to tell you, with that, when they all went silent, that's the way you can kill anybody's voice. You don't even attack. They're not killing your voice. You were taking advantage of their position, having a, like a billion people watching or whatever. And they simply said, you can't take advantage of our platform anymore. You have to build your own. They're not killing your voice. They're just preventing you from using their voice. There is a distinct difference. Hack them, okay? So when we did the Moment of Truth Summit about, about a month ago, Google and everybody completely silenced. I couldn't buy AdWords or everything. I put Dennis Montgomery stuff on the stage. I put the guy that set the first algorithms, this Clint Curtis. We put all 50 states up there, and, they, and it got silenced. It was like talking inside of just a building. But, and I prayed. I went on my show and I said, why won't the FBI guys come and bash my door down and take me away? Because I wanted to get the word out. I thought maybe, maybe Fox News or Newsmax or somebody would report this finally and bring up machines. Well, I want to tell you two nights ago a miracle happened because Tucker Carlson went out there and talked about the machines right. on Fox News. God bless him. God bless him. Oh, great. I didn't hear about that. And he doubled down, and he did it last night, too. <laughs> and Newsmax actually had me on, even though I couldn't say I, but it, but they had me on. It's a step, everybody. I'm telling you, the grace that God gave us was all these things that are happening had to happen just the way they did. Because you know what? We're going to get to this glorious place, and it's on his timing, not ours. And I want to say, I want to say one more thing, and it'll take you just one minute. Everybody comes up to me and says, Mike, my prayers aren't answered. I've been praying that, that you know, for you that this will happen or that Donald Trump will come back. When's he coming back and all these things? And I said, you know what? In my life, I said, those were reactionary prayers. And I said, they might not be. Yeah, so he's talked about reactionary prayers before. He wants to fix a situation that he's not happy with or whatever. And he says God never answers reactionary prayers. I don't even know what that means exactly, but okay. God's will. Well, where is God's will? God's will is in the Word. And so if you stay in the Word, 
you can be proactive in prayer and they line up with God's will. So when things happen like happened to me two days ago, it happened for a reason. I stood there in heart as they going, hallelujah, <laughs> praise the Lord. Something good is going to come out of this. And then here I am here in front of you. God bless you. God, this guy is something else. That's awesome. <clears throat> okay, Dutch. Uh, before, <laughs> before I let Dutch, I, I want to give you a little update. You know, we were in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, back when was it, July 1st? I think we were in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, Terry, my wife Terry and I had started a decree that we felt impressed to write and we got Pastor Hank and Brenda's involvement. Then I sent it to Dutch and Cece and they, they really wrapped it up. And we, and we led the audience in that decree and we're gonna do that again tonight. Oh, yeah. So if you guys are unfamiliar with this, this is called the Watchman's Decree. Now, I've talked about this before on my channel. In fact, I did a whole video about this a while back, the, the Watchman's Decree. It's insane. It's psychotic, straight up psychotic shit. Uh, just listen to what they have to say in the Watchman's Decree and we'll 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 go through it. Hopefully they don't start drilling too loudly. I can already hear it a little. And may I remind you, we were gone from Atlanta, but two days later, those Georgia Guidestones mysteriously were gone. <laughs> oh, yeah. If, if you're watching this five years in the future, the Georgia Guidestones, there's like this big conspiracy theory about these, these stones. It's just like a big monument. Like, who gives a shit, right? And, but the far right ha is, like, obsessed with this Guidestones Monument thinks that it's satanic and Luciferian and all kinds of crazy shit. And these people are talking about how they said a prayer and the Guidestones were destroyed. Oh my God, dude. So that's Flashpoint. Nut City up in this piece. In the last part, Pastor Dutch Sheets has a complete emotional meltdown over the fact that he doesn't control the U.S. government. I'm not joking. He describes crying for three hours, draped in an American flag, telling God his heart is going to break and he's going to die. I went to the, over in the corner and I, I grabbed a flag we had and I wrapped it around me and I laid on the floor. And I sobbed and I knew I was crying with, with him. I knew we were crying together for this nation, Gene. I said, God, please, you have to stop this because my heart is literally going to break and I'm going to die. And I said, please don't kill me. So stick around. You definitely do not want to miss this one. 